all that up. I mean, the pork and you get sick and then you get a medical or something. Like when I was on the outside, I ran this hustle. I tried to I'm act like- I'm telling you God's words, not no hustle. And I'm gonna tell you, God is black. God is black. Everybody knows God is white. Everything the white man taught you, you accepted. He taught you you were a black heathen and you believed him. He taught you to worship a blonde, blue-eyed Jesus with white skin and you believed him. He taught you that black was a curse and you believed that. Did you ever look up the word black in a dictionary? For what? Did you ever study anything that wasn't part of some con? What the hell for, man? So to combat hair discrimination against black women, we should let white women normalize it on our behalf. Walk me through that. Because you know what's actually going to happen is that then these black hairstyles, which again will rip y'all's hair out, and I cannot stress that enough, will suddenly become the norm for them and then we will continue to be discriminated against. Because the issue isn't inherently the hair itself, the issue is that we're black and that there are centuries of anti-blackness to unpack that cannot be done by a white woman appropriating a black hairstyle. This might just be the whitest privileges take I've seen yet. Bitch, I said what they said. I'd rather be famous. Don't say we didn't want her. Kiss my white fucking ass, bitch. Poor didn't have a mental breakdown at the same time. It was a mess. Started taking the braids out. The whole bottom half is kind of like messed up, and it looks okay right now, but I'm about to wash my hair. So I just got out of the shower, and uh, I have this huge matted section like right there, and there's no way in fucking hell I'm gonna be able to get this shit out. Could see I why many white women or most white women um, are in fact jealous of black women really said why do y'all hate black women so much and you are only jealous of someone you can never be like like if someone is out of your reach um, that can be financially socially economically um, visually ethnically it can have so many um, reasons if somebody is out of your reach for you you always react with jealousy, sometimes consciously and some, sometimes subconsciously. So I think we should all, as white women, just admit we're jealous of black women's hair. White women, here we are again. It's their trend. They're building their community. There are spaces that we don't belong in. Deal with it. Good guy. I got Milky Way for blood, evolution in my veins I'm gone, I've been far away I'm illuminated, I'll make a move, start a waves I've been dreaming about flying for a long time I had a vision from the crazy, wanna go sign Artificially intelligent way I I'm your future best and present, I'm a fine line Yeah, I'm a missing link of this illusion I am not really here, I'm an intrusion I don't swim or sing Come across this this song. And it's a song called Jericho. I don't know why, but I can't stop listening to it. Oh, I'm so hypnotized. Like she's she's angelic. This is Lucifer. He is singing to a generation, trying to get us to identify with him. You guys, in minutes, when I came home from my vacation, cleaning the house, I got 
I got rewrite lyrics and it went viral. Hi, I've been saved by grace. I got Jesus on my mind and his blood running through my veins. And when he moves, he makes all hell rumble. He won't ever, ever fall, never stumble. He's coming soon, so you better get humble. Bend your knee or like Jericho crumble. A lot of Christians said thank you, like I knew something was off, but I didn't know why. I am famous on TikTok as a colonizer, white supremacist, racist, <laughs> fake Christian. I've been called every uh, Jezebel. I've been called everything by Christians and non-Christians. Um, and that's what happens when you hit demonic veins. There's gonna be backlash. There is no way I would have had this song and there is no way I could have l survived the backlash, but because of the Holy Spirit and because of all the wilderness seasons in my life that I've actually been through, I'm able to say that you guys have nothing. You have nothing. Like there's nothing you can say. You're like Nerf darts. When the Lord gives us a word, we need to have been in the wilderness with him, have the power of the Holy Spirit so that when we come forth boldly with the song of the Lord or a word of the Lord, whatever it is that God calls you to say, we can stand in the truth. With me. Black, destitute of light, devoid of color, enveloped in darkness, hence utterly dismal or gloomy, as the future looked black. Pretty good with them words, ain't you? Soiled with dirt, foul, sullen, hostile, forbidding, as a black day. Foully or outrageously wicked, as black cruelty, indicating disgrace, dishonor, or culpability. And there's others. Black male, black ball, black guard. Yeah, well, there's some more, right? Let's look up white. Here. Read. White. Of the color of pure snow. Uh, reflecting all the rays of the spectrum. The opposite of black. Uh, free from spot or blemish. Innocent. Pure. Huh. Ain't this something? Without evil intent, harmless, honest, square dealing, and honorable. Wait a minute, but this, this, this was written by white folks though, right? I mean, this white, white folks book? This sure ain't no black man's book. So what we reading this one for? Because the truth is lying there. If you read behind the words, you got to take everything the white man says and use it against him. That's such a victim take, honestly. Aniko wrote a song. Aniko wrote a song that you stole because you were offended by it. And now you're on the defensive because you got upset that people called you a colonizer and a white supremacist because you stole a black person's song. Tell me again about how they have the victim take. And demonic just for existing. That's such, that's such a victim take, honestly. Not only did you infringe on Iniko's copyright, took the song, rewrote it, to, super colonized it, called it demonic, but because you did that and they came out and defended themselves, now they have a victim mentality? Listen, point blank, what you did was infringe on their copyright and their intellectual property. You don't have any right to use their intellectual property for anything. The only reason you're kind of getting away with it so far is because of TikTok, is because of this whole ecosystem of everyone can do anything, blah, blah, blah. But as soon as you decide to start monetizing it in any way, Iniko can come for that money. And I hope they do. The time has come for me to finally send these out. I am here at the post office. So uh, it just got worse, a lot worse. So the lady who stole Iniko's um, King's affirmation because it wasn't Christian enough or white enough um, is now going on tour. And guess what she's going to be touring? You're right, the stolen song. So I'm gonna need someone on E Nico's team to get on this because I'm gonna need someone to get on this. 
like she's signed to a whole record label now. Like I'm gonna need some of your lawyers. I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna need someone to get on this because this is colonization at its finest. Okay, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need somebody, please. White folks, y'all have went crazy. Do you believe the things that white people are coming out of white people's mouth? It's like this uh, exorcism, like they're possessed. <laughs> Saying wild shit. Is it Beck? What's the white man's name at the White House? He doesn't want us to have Martin Luther King. You don't own Martin Luther King. Did you hear? We didn't, we didn't own Abraham Lincoln. We know you didn't own him because he was black. We owned him. <laughs> we know our own people. That's why they put him on that penny. They didn't think it was worth a goddamn. <laughs> the Indians said it best. You cannot hide your blood from your people. Don't, don't want us to have nothing. We don't try to take nothing. White folks, we don't try to take nothing of yours. Why do they try to take our stuff? We don't try to take nothing. We didn't try to take Elvis. We didn't try to take Joan of Arc. We didn't try to take Helen of Troy. We don't mess with they shit. We do not fuck with they shit. We, do we fuck with they shit? Come on, be real. We don't try to take they shit. They always try to take our shit and recycle it and say it's theirs. American Idol is so English, it's so brilliant, American Idol. American Idol is the Apollo with white judges. Keep this shit real. But always trying to take our stuff. Ain't that a trip? We just loved us some Tina Turner, remember? They took her. Remember Lionel Richie? We loved him. They took him. They take our shit. You know, I ain't bullshitting. If I'm lying, correct me. They took James Brown. Oh, they gave him back. They took OJ. They gave him back. Anything we like, they take. Remember the cookie man? They took them goddamn cookies. <laughs> Remember Essence? White folks own it. See? The Apollo, white folks own it. BET, almost black television, white folks own it. <laughs> All we got left is Jet. And I'm worried about them. <laughs> they take us. White folks, I'm just being open with you. Don't look crazy. I'm being open. I'm the best black friend you can have. I'm telling you the goddamn truth. Stop taking our shit. Can't we have something? They don't want us to have a headache. <laughs> take these aspirins. You can't have no goddamn headache. <laughs> I'm just bringing it real. I'm bringing, put it on the table. And how come white folks, you got to explain this to me. How come what's on us is ugly, but when it's on you, it's cute? Look at your black, look at this black woman, beautiful, big, full, yours too, full black lips. Look full on you, yo, you bangy bitch. <laughs> on the white lady, ethnic, the look, full, sexy. Ain't that deep? Look at your black skin, beautiful black skin, on you. Oh, black thing. <laughs> on the white lady, your tan is gorgeous. <laughs> your corn rolls, on you, you little pickaninny. <laughs> on Bo Derek, a 10. <laughs> ain't this shit some shit? Y'all ain't making it up. Ugly on us and cute on them. Your big full, 
you bangy butt, you big African ass, old big old ab, ba, ba, you bangy bitch. <laughs> White girl, sexy fool. That a bitch? What have we been killed on the freeway and white folks come by? I'll take those lips. <laughs> it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. We've got to fight back. We've got to fight back. We've got to stick with our shit. We've got to stick with our beauty. They can't tell us what's pretty. We know what pretty is. Everybody then went crazy. They taken all our folks to jail. They taken them all to jail. And I'll say to you black people that been in jail or going to jail, don't be shamed. Don't be shamed. <laughs> That's where they took Jesus. They took him straight to jail. That's where they took Martin Luther King. They took him straight to jail. Malcolm X, they took him. You got good company. You get in jail, be proud. taking everything from us. I'm telling y'all black folks, we got to get back. We got to pray because they're taking everything. You know prayer is strong. We got to pray. <laughs> we got to pray because they're taking shit. It was a little skinny white girl with big lips. She lived with Brad Pitt. Angelina. Salt. That bitch is getting ready to play salt and pepper. I can't make it up. They had just picked her to play Cleopatra. She is the third white woman. First it was Claudette Colbert, then it was Elizabeth Taylor, and now it's, it's her. The third white woman. White folks, y'all be shaming yourself. Kept telling that lie. Cleopatra was black. She was black as Cicely. She was black as Cicely Tyson. She was black. Cleopatra five. She was black. Egyptian. That's in Africa. That's not some small village in Sweden. Her daddy was Nubian. And you keep telling that Greek lie. Oh, she was half Greek. That's a lie. She married a Greek for power. She killed him. She never even fucked him. She was a bad black bitch. Bad and arrogant. The daddy was Nubian and proud. She only screwed two men, Caesar and Mark Anthony. If she'd have screwed anybody else, we would have known it because they'd have been talking about it. She was black. Oh, that old black bitch fucked him. You know how they talk. She went to Egypt, her entrance into Rome, that gold, all that shit. Them white folks are still talking about it today. She wore them out and she was arrogant. Caesar, she had a children by Caesar. She seduced him and Mark Anthony. Caesar tried to give her a gift and she wouldn't accept it. Now that's a, when a bitch won't accept a gift, that's a bad bitch. She said, a gift? What could you possibly give me? I am the queen of Egypt that Egypt has not already given me. Now that's some bad shit. You can't give her a gift? God damn. But they want a white woman to play her. But I got one better than that. I'm getting ready to drive y'all crazy. I got one better than that. Who's this white woman? They say she's the greatest actress ever to set on an American stage. Meryl somebody. What's her name? Meryl C. Guess who she getting ready to play? Harriet Tutman. I can't wait for the reviews. I can't wait. The white reviews. She was absolutely brilliant. The makeup was phenomenal. Some of my best friends are black. I felt as if she was my best friend when she freed the first slaves I got naked in the theater <laughs> see you laughing 
because you know I'm bullshitting you, but that Hollywood's so goddamn crazy, it might be true. 